With the coming of spring, a blush of green spreads across the land around Beijing. As promised, a group of tree planters arrives in the city's suburbs. Xi Jinping has been coming here to plant trees every April since he was elected General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee in 2012. A civilization can only flourish if its natural environment flourishes. Ecological civilization is, therefore, fundamental to the sustainable development of the Chinese nation. Today, environmental protection is a priority of the CPC. Since China initiated reform and opening up, its economy has been growing rapidly. But in the early years, this created environmental problems, including severe pollution, posing a threat to the people's health and livelihood. General Secretary Xi Jinping has emphasized that while China's environmental issues have been building up over years, now is the time to halt the trend. He insists the CPC should have the will to achieve this. In September 2013, Xi Jinping delivered a speech at Nazarbayev University in Kazakhstan conveying to the world China's concept of green development. Xi's statement provides theoretical guidance for the development of China's ecological civilization in the new era. In 2012, the 18th CPC National Congress for the first time integrated the development of ecological civilization into its overall plan for building socialism with Chinese characteristics, alongside economic, political, cultural and social development. Then, in 2015, the CPC Central Committee and the State Council jointly issued the policy documents Opinions on Accelerating Ecological Progress and Integrated Reform Plan for Promoting Ecological Progress, as well as 40 other reform plans for the building of ecological civilization. Three decades ago, Yatsun village in Zhejiang province was dynamiting its surrounding mountains to mine and building cement plants. The villagers made a living, but their environment was severely damaged. In August 2005, when Xi Jinping was the party secretary of Zhejiang province, he conducted field research in Yatsun village. He pointed out that destroying the environment was no longer an option and put forward the concept of clear waters and green mountains are mountains of gold and silver. Today, Yatsun village has won back its clear waters and green mountains. Panchun Lin has been running an agritainment business in Yatsun village for 18 years. Before that, he drove a tractor to transport ores.
也就是我们的金山银山。In March 2020, 15 years after his first visit, Xi Jinping came to the village for a second time. 时间如梭啊，啊，过得真快。当年的情况我也是历历在目。你们现在取得的成绩啊，就证明我们这条路子啊是正确的。经济发展不能以啊，破坏生态为代价，而且生态本身它就是一种经济，保护生态，啊，生态也会回馈你。Clear waters and green mountains are mountains of gold and silver, are a guarantee of sustainable development. In May 2018, a national conference on ecological and environmental protection was held, putting forward Xi Jinping's thoughts on ecological civilization as a guide for building a beautiful China. Putting the concept into practice and realizing green development is an important task of the era that has been entrusted to the CPC. Guangxi, a city of Hubei province rich in mineral resources, was known as Central China's Cradle of Steel and hometown of cement. But its outdated production technology was causing huge environmental damage. In 2007, Huangxi's energy consumption per unit of output was the highest in Hubei. Two years later, it was listed as a resource-exhausted city. From 2014, Huangxi resolved to focus on improving its environment and upgrading its industries. In 2018, its efforts had clearly paid off when it earned the title of National Forest City. Green, the color of life, is the background hue of a beautiful China and a truly moving addition to any barren landscape. The People's Republic of China in its early years was faced with serious soil erosion and desertification problems. Planting trees and halting the trend became an urgent task. In 1955, the CPC's Central Committee issued a nationwide call to turn the motherland green. The whole country actively responded by planting as many trees as possible. To conquer desertification and change destiny, countless people have fought for decades to transform degraded land. In 1962, 369 people with an average age of less than 24 responded to the party's call and came to the Sai Hanba area of Hebei province to start a program of afforestation. 59 years later, it is ongoing. Our dream was to finish our work. So, we used the power of the government to use our own youth 
，要在塞恩纳这一片土地上，把它改造成绿洲。The original volunteers for Sai Han Ba are now in their 80s, but they have handed their passion down. Three generations have created the largest forest plantation in the world, covering an area of nearly 75,000 hectares. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 Champion of the Earth for Inspiration and Action in China is China's Sahanba, a forestation community. In December 2017, the Sahanba, a forestation community, received the United Nations' highest environmental honor, the Champions of the Earth Award. Generations of Chinese desert control workers have devoted themselves to land reclamation. They have turned many barren hills into green mountains, creating a world miracle. In Yuyu County, Shangxi province, more than 100 million trees have been successfully planted. In Babusha of Gansu province, meanwhile, a green wall has been established to defend over 6,600 hectares of farmland from sand encroachment. Another impressive achievement in China's afforestation efforts is the Three North Shelter Forest Program, one of the world's largest afforestation projects. According to a NASA report released in the spring of 2019, from 2000 to 2017, about one quarter of newly added forest areas worldwide were in China, the largest single contributor. Asia's longest river, the Yangtze, was a cradle of ancient Chinese civilization. In terms of both population and GDP, the 110 cities of the Yangtze River economic belt account for over 40% of China's total. Yet because of severe water pollution and overfishing, the river itself suffered from a serious ecological crisis it became very sick. After inspection tours along the Yangtze River, Xi Jinping put forward a national strategy of strengthening environmental protection instead of seeking rapid growth at the cost of the environment in the Yangtze River Basin. On January the 1st, 2021, the primary route of the Yangtze, together with its large lakes and major tributaries, began a 10-year ban on fishing. 111,000 fishing boats and 231,000 fishermen ceased their work, marking a dramatic turning point. In June 2020, a series of photos of blue skies over Beijing went viral on Chinese social media. The world was given a glimpse of the success of coordinated action between Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei to reduce air pollution. As ecological civilization advances, the CPC Central Committee and China's central government have introduced a series of targeted measures to address key environmental issues such as air, water and land pollution. The 
Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, connecting three major cities in the Greater Bay Area of South China, straddles the Pearl River estuary like a fine cord of silk. After its official opening, it witnessed an unexpected encounter between a patrol boat and five Chinese white dolphins. 340 million yuan allocated to environmental protection in the project's overall budget had guaranteed the sea mammal's habitat. Since 2015, China's central leading group for deepening overall reform has reviewed and approved 10 pilot national park programs to protect key areas, including the source of the Yangtze River and the habitats of the Siberian tiger and giant panda, as well as other endangered species. National parks are included in the National Ecological Protection Plan and therefore afforded the strictest protection. In succession, a governing system of river, lake and forest chiefs has been created, ensuring every ecosystem has its own caretakers. All Chinese citizens, in fact, are encouraged to actively participate in ecological management in order to advance the country's ecological development. <laughs> Under the guidance of the CPC Central Committee's Green Development Concept, ecological civilization is becoming a social trend in China. Chinese people are increasingly adopting green habits, such as garbage classification, minimum food waste, low carbon weddings, less driving and less air conditioning. On a special map in the database of China's Ministry of Natural Resources, over 9.6 million square kilometers of land are marked with colors to denote different purposes. Red 就通过这个图上，我们可以做什么用途，能开发什么项目，都是一目了然。The map solves the past problem of different standards adopted, and different protected zones demarcated by different entities. Now there is only one map with one set of standards. Xi Jinping has made it clear it has overriding authority. Ecological civilization can only be guaranteed with a strict system of enforcement and the rule of law. At the Muli coal mine in western China's Qinghai province, Predatory mining by a company under the guise of ecological restoration left behind ugly quarries where green grass used to be. When the illegal activity was reported, the government reacted quickly. In August 2020, a provincial investigation group was formed to look into the case. Its inquiry exposed the bribery of officials who were prosecuted along with their bribers.
Corrective measures were promptly implemented, including the backfilling of pits, planting trees and slope stability control. In 2015, the strictest ever revision of China's environmental law was put into effect. Since then, violators have been strictly prosecuted. Building a green home is the dream of all peoples. Facing the global ecological crisis, the CPC actively shoulders its international obligations of environmental protection. On November 30, 2015, Xi Jinping attended the opening ceremony of the Paris Climate Conference. While there, he clearly stated that China's carbon dioxide emissions will peak around 2030, if not earlier. Economic and social activity requires energy, as does everyday life. As one of the world's largest energy producers and consumers, China's energy production and consumption structures have been continuously optimized since the 18th CPC National Congress. From 2012 to 2019, the country's energy consumption per unit of GDP fell by 24.4%, equivalent to saving 1.27 billion tons of coal. Today, China is vigorously adjusting its energy structure to adopt more low carbon measures. Around 100,000 lights are turned on to illuminate a vast energy base located in the Gobi Desert. Containing 3,700 meters of pipeline, this gigantic plant's task is to turn coal into liquid fuels. It's a process that doesn't burn coal and therefore avoids harmful emissions. Both inland and offshore, meanwhile, Engineering Ingenuity is achieving large-scale wind power generation. In China, two wind turbines are erected every hour, making the country the largest installer of wind power capacity in the world. On September 22, 2020, Xi Jinping announced at the general debate of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly that China aimed to achieve peak carbon dioxide emissions by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. On April 22, 2021, she attended the Leaders' Summit on Climate via video link and shared China's plan of building community of life for man and nature during his discussions with other leaders on how to address the global climate crisis. China is committed to working with other countries to protect the Earth build an ecological civilization and promote green development. Shengtai 
我们这代人的努力。Since the 18th CPC National Congress, under the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee, with Xi Jinping at its core. China has intensified its efforts to develop a socialist ecological civilization with Chinese characteristics. During the party's 19th National Congress, building a beautiful China was proposed as a new goal to make sure the country's modernization will be both beautiful and green. As the CPC works towards its vision, a breathtaking picture of a nation that is achieving true prosperity in harmony with nature is unfolding.